we're live again on my secondary channel. Welcome to Aromatically Speaking, Smell It Sunday, a live show where we, we talk about candles, we talk about aroma. I want to expand our conversations though, you know? Um, we, I think we all, probably most of us, have a passion for candles. But uh, to me, I don't talk about the philosophy of aromatics as much as I would like. Um, you know, uh, what, what it is about aromas that uh, are, are so touching and um, why, why we're drawn to candles. Now, like, just a quick example, um, really starting this one off weird, but a candle that smells like raspberries, wow! smells good smells great it smells like raspberries but there's nothing like a candle that uh, shoots you down a portal to a place in your past a place that you've never been before a place of nostalgia uh, something that has an association with your own personal story and uh, to me uh, uh, that that is what uh, I feel like we need to talk about more, but also other things that make us feel nostalgic. Welcome everybody um, in the chat. Let me pull you guys up so I can see all of your faces here. Um, I just did uh, a really quick, off the cuff, um, evaluation of eight Yankee candles that are new for 2019. I've never smelled them before. Uh, I, I didn't read any of the fragrance notes. Uh, to say, I wasn't really nervous about it, but you know, it's you know, I want to uh, always have you know when I'm smelling these on uh, you know these candles for the first time, I, I want to perform well. Um, and to and to prove to myself that um, you know what I have to switch the channel. Uh, to prove that uh, my my training and, and sensory evaluation isn't wearing away. <laughs> Look at the thumbnail. That's horrible. Um, I'm sorry, guys. Hold on. Uh, the, 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 I hope that thumbnail is. It changes when it uploads. There is everybody. How are we all doing? Let's welcome everybody. I have a lot to a lot to do. We're gonna do Q and A stuff that you guys left in the Facebook uh, fan group. Uh, you guys uh, left questions, and then today I left a post, uh, and you guys responded with a bunch of questions. But I have some mail unboxing. We're gonna do some Yankee Candle archives. Got lots of fun stuff, and then we'll we'll kind of play it by ear. We have Kazra, blend it like Brian, Stephanie Hall, who just purchased one of, I hope it's okay that I say this, one of the very last Yankee, or Yankee candle, the candle enthusiast mugs. Let's get a nice shot of that in there. Um, I don't make a dime on these, I swear. Um, I really do not. But I have three left, and I want them to go to nice homes. If you go on to eBay right now, and you type in the search bar, TCE, TCE mug, that's all you need to do. If you type in TCE mug, this will pop up. It'll be the only result, and there's three left. And then that'll be that. Oh, yeah. Um, and then we'll work on other merchandise for the future. Oh, boy. All right. Let's get some water. And let's talk about what you guys are doing. 
we need to get 273 subbies to Shane's live channel, this channel, aromatically speaking, to hit 1,000. What will 1,000 subscribers do for this channel? Real quick, 1,000 subscribers to this channel will allow, enable, super chatting. So if you're watching my last show, uh, Leslie, uh, Jeremy, and, um, and uh, uh, who, Eric um, left super chats. Uh, it's just a way to, to help fund uh, the show, the, especially the future of the, the, my, my traveling uh, shows, uh, but also monetization. On this channel, we could sit here for 10 hours and chat, right? Um, and Google or YouTube doesn't pay us a dime. Um, and that doesn't make sense, right? If we hit a thousand subscribers, then they throw, they throw a couple ads on the video and then suddenly we're making money, raise money to do more things, make, make more videos. So let's hit a thousand subscribers, shall we? Uh, invite some friends. Um... Let's, let's do what we can. We have Morgan in the house. Amy Love. Amy Love. Have we been acquainted? Um, Amy Love, That uh, that's why I, uh, I enjoy autumn and Christmas candles so much. They take me back to childhood. Yes, uh, that's... I mean, we can go on a, a kind of like a, a Yankee candle. Um, uh, the... the, 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 the the genesis of Yankee Candle. That was Mike Kittrich, uh, Mike Kittrich Sr. That was his idea, right? That his idea was not only is there an opening in the market way back in the early, late 60s, but really early 70s, mid 70s, opening the market for scented candles, but his approach was let's go for the nostalgia. Let's, let's, you know, at the time, I'm sure he was thinking these candles are only ever going to be sold in the Northeast. So let's go full, full throttle New England. Let's pull at those heartstrings. Let's, let's create those memories of childhood. Let's create those memories of grandma, grandpa. Let's create those memories of Christmas and Halloween night. And let's put them inside of a jar. Let's make jars that contain memories. And he executed that, uh, in my opinion, beautifully and it flourished throughout the 80s. And unfortunately, because of his health, Mike Kittrich really had to step down uh, within the 90s. But then we had like a second golden age. Uh, well, I don't say second golden age, but we really had the golden age of Yankee Candle. When Yankee Candle became the household name in the 90s, and all, and all the shopping malls, you could smell Yankee Candle from every corner of that shopping mall. And, um, um, and uh, they, 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 they carried on uh, beautifully. And then, uh, you know, I, I think this isn't me saying it, but from what I kind of have experienced from you guys is that um, Yankee Candle is, because it's been a, it's, you know, we've lost those pillars. We've lost Mike Kittrich. Not he's okay. He's alive, but we he's completely separated from Yankee Candle at this point. And Harlan Kent, who is really uh, the heart and soul, uh, the CEO uh, during that golden age, uh, he departed back in 2012. And uh, Yankee Candle's just been trying to find uh, get get back on its feet. And uh, I think, the, at least from your guys' reactions from some of the new candles, we may just be getting there. Oh, I typed in the mug because of autocorrect. What you want to type on eBay is this. Um, I bought some special Starbucks for my mug. Oh, well, that's great! Fantastic. Uh, what kind of um, what kind of special Starbucks? Um, 
Kazra, I love Kazra. Uh, Kazra says, fragrance is a funny thing. I recently got, um, uh, I'm not sure, f familiar with this brand. I'm sorry if I'm butchering the name, but uh, Bespoke Perfume made for me and was a part of the whole journey for fragrance notes, etc. And my girlfriend and mother told me that this smells like you. So, yeah, I mean, I think having that experience where you actually had a perfumer, correct me if I'm wrong, but it sounds like you had a perfumer design a fragrance by interacting with you, asking you questions, uh, maybe testing different uh, essential oils on your skin uh, because essential oils will react differently on on, on uh, everyone's skin just you know the general makeup of our skin makes the essential oils do different things um, and that that is a wonderful experience uh, having someone do that for you if you have the pleasure of of, of having that, I would recommend it because it does make you appreciate not only fragrance, but what perfumers, um, what their art is all about. Um, okay, so let's pull up the questions after party. Uh, what has the fog machine smell? I, it's funny that you mention it, but my fog machine, it, its I think it's officially conked out on me. Whoa, cords, cords. Oh, watch, now it'll, now it's working fine, but earlier, that just gives a little added movement outside the window but the smell of fog juice is a wonderful thing it's funny I was reading a review on fog machines and someone was complaining that it's like oh, I hate the smell of fog juice are you kidding me one thing that brings you right back to autumn or at least for me uh, let's go full throttle New England just share to Instagram doggo star Definitely, I don't think we have been acquainted. Uh, thank you so much. It looks like you're trying to help spread the word, uh, spread the love. You said I have a question. Go ahead and ask it. Is he? Uh, am I taking questions? I'll take questions. We'll have a special little moment for that where I'll devote all my attention, but I'll try to keep my eye on here. Now, let's go here. Um, Stephanie, I saw the coffee. Golden S'mores. Ground coffee. Marshmallow and graham notes. So that is the coffee that Stephanie bought for her candle enthusiast mug. That's kind of cool. That sounds delicious. Let's see what other questions you guys have. Gareth James, looking forward to the live today, Shane. Uh, hope you made it. Um, Rachel says, uh, Morgan is visiting Salem, Massachusetts soon. She may enjoy hearing about your favorite things to do while in Salem. Well, I'll be the first to say that I spent a lot of time in Salem, not as much as Rachel, um, uh, but I spent a lot of time in Salem. My brother lived in Salem for several years. He owned a couple haunted attractions, not a couple, more than a couple, um, uh, but I'll be the first to say that I, there's still a lot that I haven't done in Salem. So I would actually love to ask this question uh, to people like Rachel or Morgan when she visits. What are some of the coolest things to do? But what I would do in Salem, uh, my brother lived down uh, on uh, 
the Pickering Wharf. So walking out to the light tower by the water, uh, when I spent a lot of time there clearing my head, um, thinking, drinking coffee, it's just so quiet and peaceful uh, out there. I love it down by the water, down by the wharf. And then if you go where the Hocus Pocus house is, you kind of have to drive, uh, it's, is it, it's north. I, th I don't know if it's north, but you, you got to kind of go up and around the harbor a little bit to get to a different vantage point, but it's beautiful up there as well. Um, uh, the haunted attractions that I really liked are no longer there. I'm not saying anything bad, but there is a place. What's the name of it? It's on Derby Street. It's more of a wax museum. I'd recommend that. Um, somebody also asked about breweries. Uh, there used to be the Salem Brewery. And then I think it, it took on new ownership. It's a good brewery. It's fun. They have nice, like a nice tasting flight to sample all the different beers. I and I apologize if things have changed since the last time I've been there. I wouldn't call it top-notch micro brew, fantastic beer, but there is a sort of novelty to a lot of their beers. There was one beer that they actually put like tiny little blueberries inside the beer and then the bubbles from the beer or the ale somehow make the the blueberries seriously they, they will float to the top and as soon as they get to the top the blueberries will sink back to the bottom of the glass the pine glass it is crazy so that's you know good beer good ambiance good bar and grill food um, there may be other breweries around but what, whatever that brewery is, it's right on Derby Street, kind of like the main, well, what used to be the main stretch. Um, um, uh, favorite things to do in Salem, a couple more things. I would, I would definitely check out Marblehead. Um, I stumbled upon it looking for um, Hocus Pocus filming locations uh, and all the time I spent in Salem I never was in Marblehead but it was just it was just one of those days that I just I was there to get a few shots and I just didn't want to leave it was such a beautiful town and kind of looks more like Salem like what people would expect Salem to look like compared to you know the Salem village if that means anything so Morgan um the microbreweries, I uh, answered that question. There's one right there in town. Um, look it up. Um, Julie says, I would like to see a few of your favorite summertime Yankee candles in your collection. Um, oh, boy. Um, I mean... How do I answer this without breaking out candles? I'm very much a holiday. I, I really like holiday candles. Um, you know, I think you guys know that I love Halloween candles. I love Christmas candles. I love, uh, I mean, to me, all autumn is a holiday. Um, if you consider, you know, Thanksgiving and, and Halloween and uh, Christmas and, 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 and all the different phases of autumn and uh, so always so much excitement during harvest season so autumn candles Halloween candles but summer candles are it's it's it, it's not tough it's not that I don't like fruity cocktail um, uh, f you know fruit smoothie beverages like refreshing uh, candles Sicilian lemon I, I mentioned uh, a fairly simplistic candle um, I like for a summertime kitchen candles uh, we talked about olive and thyme um, and um, I'll talk about this some other time but uh, because olive and thyme I feel like it's become more popular um, now I really want to recommend um, it was from the same collection as a candle it's right here on the floor uh, sea salt and sage. I burned the two of these together. 
beautiful combination, two candles that completely complement each other. So in the kitchen, um, more herbal kind of candles, citrusy candles for, for summer, but, but it's not rare for me to break out a Christmas candle in the summer. I know that sounds crazy, but hear me out. I like, the whole point for me in candles is that it's an escape, right? So when I was in California, every day is summer, right? Every day is summer. So if I had a day off and I wanted to stay in and maybe get some work done or watch some Netflix, um, especially in the morning when I'm having my coffee, you know, I'd light up a Christmas candle. In July, I would light up a Christmas candle and maybe put, like, a Christmas show on or, or movie on. I did this several times. It's just, it, you know, sometimes you're, you just, you're jonesing for a holiday. And uh, so that is not rare for me to do something like that. I'd like to know what your favorite fruit-scented candles are. And if there are any pairings of them that go well together. So citrus and florals. If you can tolerate florals, first of all, find out what kind of florals you can tolerate if you can't tolerate all of them. Um, but mixing citrus candles, floral candles, always a great way to get a great contrast, right? Fruit floral. The contrast and in the language of aroma those two elements create a perception of clean right every detergent every fabric softener every cleaning spray we use is somehow a combination of florals and citrus um, every glade air spray we go and find uh, at the grocery store if it's a clean scent, citrus, florals. Um, um, it's just the way it goes. So, um, uh, or if you're doing, uh, looking for a little bit more savory approach, uh, berries, any kind of berries, you can even do, you can do citrus, you can do snow fruit, but uh, sweet tart fruit mixed with something really savory, creamy. So let's say buttercream, let's say a, mar a good marshmallow candle, uh, uh, what's another good one? Um, even if you want to do something chocolatey, um, you know, I'm, I always have the whoopie pie right here. Uh, something that's a little bit savory and creamy and milky, uh, frosting-like, and mix that with berries. Um, and that kind of gives you that parfait, uh, peaches and cream, uh, strawberry shortcake kind of thing. Talk about Salem, please, says Laura. Um, we talked about Salem. I just need to go and do more. The one thing I want to do at Salem, if anyone hasn't seen my, my Salem video, the one I made a long time ago, um, um, I read... Uh, when it comes to Nath Nathaniel Hawthorne, I, 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 I'm familiar, obviously, not obviously, but I'm familiar with Scarlet Letter, uh, very much so. But uh, And I also did read The House of Seven Gables somewhere in high school, early college. But I'll be completely honest with you, I can't remember it. I can't remember it at all. And The, 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 the House of Seven Gables is right there in Salem. He wrote it in Salem. And uh, there's the Hawthorne Hotel which is owned by the same family that owns the public house in which i befriended that that befriended that family back in november and i, I stayed there for a total of like five six nights um last uh last uh holiday season and um i have stayed at the hawthorne hotel but they've also invited me um to stay at the Hawthorne uh, when I'm in town. But I feel like if I'm gonna make a video staying at the Hawthorne Hotel, the House of Seven Gables, I gotta read, I gotta read the book. I gotta sit down and read the book. But that's, that's, some, that's something I can tackle in another Salem video. Plus my brother had a museum called the Edgar Allan Poe Nathaniel Hawthorne Museum. Um, it was a short-lived uh, wax museum 
but it was r it was right there in the heart of Salem on Derby Street. TJ, hi Shane, how you doing, TJ? Good to see you. Will you do a lemon candle review, Hannah? Hannah, Hannah, Hannah. Um, I know you've been asking this question for a while, and thank you, Leslie. Count Orlock's Nightmare Gallery Monster Museum is on Essex Street. Then that's not the place, then. Dang. I thought the Count Orlock Nightmare... Um, the museum I was just talking about, the place I, uh, that my brother owned and ran and built... There's a place there now that is the, the attraction that I want to recommend. Uh, really uh, fantastically cool owner, puts a lot of heart and soul, and he has, it's, it's like a wax museum, but they're, they're made of silicone, so they're very much more realistic, and um, he did a really good job. Uh, will I be doing a, a lemon, um, Hannah's question is, will I be doing a kind of a, um, a retrospective of lemon scented candles from Yankee Candle. I just, I don't, I don't think I'm going to invest in every lemon candle by Yankee Candle. Um, please feel free to check out, I did several uh, lemon uh, evaluation videos on Yankee Candle, but what I will do is, and I've been talking about this for a while, I have, I'm going to be doing a blue, I have every, blue, I'm not kidding. Unless I'm 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 missing something, but I've 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 tried it. You know, you you know I know my Yankee Candle, and I have I've gotten every single blueberry scent that Yankee Candle has ever made. Some are very rare, um, and long extinct. But I have every single one, I think, I think. If not, maybe I'm missing one or two, but I'm pretty sure I have every one. Blueberries in the title, I own it, and what I want to do is a comparison of every Yankee Candle, Blueberry Candle, throughout the history of the company. In fact, I'm glad you brought that up, because I actually brought one of them. You know, I, I, I was going to keep this a secret for that video, but it's like, why? You know, I said I was going to make that video like a year ago. So let me show you this one. When I say that I have a bunch of rare ones, and I really did my research, um, can we see that? I turned the light off. Um, um, this one right here, Yankee Main Blueberry. Can we get a better focus, please? Thank you. Um, this was an exclusive candle uh, made for... Uh, the markets up Kittery, Maine, Freeport, Maine. Um, uh, this uh, is, I can't pinpoint the date exactly, um, but it's uh, definitely prior to 2005. It only came in the medium sized jar. It did come in tarts, but I had to get the medium house warmer and so interesting the blueberry scents are always going to age they're not going to have the greatest shelf life however with that said with this being that old as old as it is it's far different than something like the new england blueberry this is really really tart non cooked down blueberries this is like a blueberry bush uh fresh blueberries and uh the bush uh, uh that we picked that bramble off of um and uh i have another little surprise when i finally make that video uh there's gonna be another surprise to that video hopefully we'll do it one of these days blueberry season is happening right now I should be making it right now. Uh, Amy Love says, bought the Holy Ground candle online and it was wonderful. I'm sure being there in person is great. Amy, absolutely. Um, it, um, uh, the Holy Ground, she's referring to the Witch City Wicks candle. Um, 
just talking to Liz, yes, two days ago, and, um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, there's just, uh, it's funny, we almost didn't meet. I was hanging out at the Yankee Candle Village. I was hanging out in the hotel. I was editing. And I was supposed to visit Witch City Wicks. Or not, it, there wasn't a store at the time. There was no store. It was just a website. But I was supposed to meet up with Liz to do a video. And I never really heard back from her. This is before we ever met. And I remember sitting, I was in the bed editing on my computer, and I get a, uh, an email from Liz saying, I'm sorry it took me so long to get back to your email. I would love to, to meet up with you at Salem. So I was supposed to be at Yankee Candle Village for a couple days, and I just I took off the next morning. And thankfully I did, because um, we were quick buddies. And my favorite candle of hers, just for the sheer... A boldness of it is holy ground. Uh, okay, let's do um, an unboxing, shall we? And there's somebody I need to thank. Uh, somebody who purchased a mug, Matthew. Matthew, if you're watching, if you're in the house, um, bought a mug and also uh, asked if he could send me uh, a couple candles that he enjoyed my way. And I said, absolutely. I'll feature them on the live show on Sunday. Well, uh, I was not able to get to my P.O. box yesterday. It was just a very busy day for me. And I'm not sure if they're there. Um, but I just want to apologize. I will unbox them, hopefully, next Sunday or sometime very soon. But I apologize that it won't be happening today. So thank you, Matthew, for supporting candle enthusiasts, getting the mug, but also sending some stuff my way. What do we have in this box here? Last time I opened a box from eBay, I had a smashed Yankee candle. Let's hope we have better luck this time. And I need a sharper knife. All right, we're doing good here. We're doing good. Smell something. Come on. Uh, ha Hannah Ray, I'm currently listening to The Legend of Sleepy Hollow audiobook. That's cool. Uh, do you know who, who recorded? I'm sorry, the microphone's right here. Who recorded that audiobook? I wonder if. I think I did. Like um, Christopher Lee or Vincent Price ever narrate The Legend of Sleepy Hollow? Oh, oh, oh. Woo. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this never gets old, folks. This never gets old. Uh, we have a black band. We're talking a vintage a Yankee Candle here. Uh, black band, house warmer jar, retired fragrance, almond toffee. And check this out. Some of these um, used to have this little thing here, limited time only. And what's funny about that Fireside, when it was originally released, had this little thing on it, limited, uh, limited uh, time only. And yet that candle was re-released and released and released over the years. But this one, not. Almond Toffee. Um, I'm not going to have a year on this, but let me take a look to see. Oh, It's on the newer side. I would say mid to late 90s. 
we're uh, looking at here. This is something I've never smelled before. If you look at the wax, if we can get a focus, uh, we have a little bit um, of the dimpling that we see in uh, older candles, especially if it's in a place where um, um, uh, you know, if the lid's not on airtight or, um, you know, if you have like a dehumidifier or place you're living is not, uh, is, is, uh, the, the opposite of humid, dry, very dry. <sighs> I'm excited. So a candle that's at least, let's say at least 20 years old up to 25 plus. Wow, that's such a, a familiar smell. just smells like perfectly cooked dough. Um, you have to, excuse me, I, I did go to the Culinary Institute of America, but I was a wine guy. Not only that, but I am not a baker. So when I, when I start talking about baking, no education up here. Um, but my grandmother used to make this thing where Essentially, just roll out dough, right? And you put in like butter and raisins, cinnamon, sugar, and whatever. And she roll it up, and you you bake it, right? And you ha you get like this kind of a cinnamon roll, um, very um, but very doughy, you know, like uh, like pizza dough, doughy kind of aroma. And almond extract. I wasn't expecting that. Now, almond extract, um, I don't know how you guys feel, but uh, to me, when I smell almond extract, I smell, I smell pistachios. It's just, it's amazing that it smells like pistachios. They're very distinct, really sweet uh, aroma. Like if you love the crunchy pistachio vanilla uh, from Yankee Candle, that's definitely almond extract. <sighs> this candle's really held up well. Um, and uh, definitely we can say toffee. I, I mean, I'll be happy to say toffee, but it's the caramel that I really smell. Again, caramel, what is it? Sugar, cane sugar, brown sugar, butter, salt. Everything that's bad for us, you put it in a pot, in a saucepan, you melt it down, you caramelize the sugar. It's a non-enzymatic brown. It, it changes the flavor profile of the sugar, and you get that distinct sweet and savory aromatic. And the more you caramelize that sugar, uh, the caramel uh, becomes toffee. And... I'll actually go to toffee because sometimes toffee has kind of a, a roasted coffee note. Um, speaking of which, hazelnut maybe. Yeah, maybe. Um, and uh, interesting. I mean, so a cocoa note, um, peanut brittle, almond extract, caramel for days, a little bit of that coffee shop action. Uh, that is cool. That is fun. That's going right next to Berry Crumble on my sweet treats shelf. Right next to hazelnut coffee and maple walnut and whoopie pie. Very cool. 
I really wish I could find Armoretto scented candle. Well, um, that's a good one. So Armoretto is made from stone fruits. I use Armoretto as a descriptor every so often on candles. I'm curious, Rachel, um, it's a bad, bad uh, habit of asking a question and then not following up, but have you ever smelled a witch's cauldron? I know you've seen it, but have you ever smelled a witch's cauldron? Because there's, to me, there is that Dr. Pepper Armoretto Cola Stone Fruit thing in there. And I say Stone, or I say Cola and Dr. Pepper because Dr. Pepper kind of smells like cherry, and the Cola is kind of a note that I get on Armoretto. But it's also very smoky, too. What else do we got? How about. A Yankee Candle, what's the word? Ah, what's the word? God, coffee. It's the coffee is what's happening. Um, what happened when the, the luminous candle was released and they started exploding and they, they had to, they, they, they recalled them. Woo! They did a recall on the luminous candle and it's kind of a shame because I actually was interested in, in buying a few and and then when they were recalled I'm like well it would be nice to have one just as a collector's piece and <laughs> looking uh, here we go so I don't have the candle and they released a lot of scents too I think and uh, I think it was like something like 600,000 luminous candles were recalled again it was a square vessel and they were exploding so i don't have the luminous candle but this was the accessory uh oh you can see the other side of the studio look at the studio light uh and the camera this was the accessory for the luminous candle you see that uh shimmering flickering uh, candle. So what you do is, this is a stand with mirrors. It definitely needs to be polished. Um, oh man, this candle's not doing well. Alright, let's do this. I'm going to put my hand in the fire. Hand in the fire! Ah, No, it's okay. It's just an illusion. Um... Let's get that exposed right. So you see what happens here? It's like a really cool accessory. One candle, but it creates a lot of ambiance. And if you even tip it this way, this is something Yankee Candles should bring back, or redesign in some form. And it's a little bit overexposed right now, I apologize. But that is a nice accessory. And then when I found this at an outlet, I'm like, wow, you know, this was from the line that was recalled. And they're like, nah, nothing was ever recalled. I'm like, wow. It's amazing how little sometimes the employees of Yankee Candle know about their own history. Um, does anybody have this? It's the first time I, I, I took it out. I bought this a long time ago. Originally priced at $24.99. Good price. But I got it for 75% off during the semi-annual sale. So I guess it wasn't all that long ago. Look at this. Amazon. $15.99. Uh, rechargeable too. No batteries required. Yeah. That looks real. Looks better than real. This is cool. This is cool. Oh, and is Stephanie still here? I'm always waiting for Stephanie. She wasn't here a couple lives. And I'm 
always forgetting. I want to show this one more time. I think, Stephanie, what I want to do is get this in a frame. Uh, or, or at least some kind of plexiglass top. Maybe not. Maybe not. But uh, if you guys didn't see this, I really should post a high quality photo on Instagram. Uh, Stephanie took a bunch of my Starbucks coffee bags. Now, not just the, the, the normal ones. Like, Pike Place is normal. But this is like the 20th anniversary. A lot of these are single origin, um, holiday. Um, actually, the one, the Thanksgiving, um, the Thanksgiving bag that I did the video on is actually on this artwork. She made this beautiful collage. I love it. I couldn't have asked for anything better. She outdid herself. Cassie Cielo, that was another video I did. Um, so it's like, it's really great. I look at this, and instead of throwing those bags away, I kind of go down through memory lane of all of the wonderful Starbucks coffees I've had. Thank you so much. Um, I love having that in the background, Stephanie. And Stephanie is here. Hi, Stephanie. Yes, everyone tell her. She did, she did a fantastic job. And she was all self-conscious. I'm like, why are you self-conscious? It's beautiful. Um, a Nutella-scented candle would be awesome. That's good. That is good. So uh, a chocolate, cocoa, uh, hazelnut spread candle. Love almond extract. Yum. Almond toffee, says Kelly. Um, love the mermaid. Yeah, the mermaid was great. The, um, every anniversary, they put the Starbucks mermaid on the bag. Uh, and Hannah says, would it be cool for a coffee shop art? Yeah, the day I open my own coffee shop. It's going to be hung up, that's for sure. Let's, let's get more. I have more unboxings. Here's the thing. I have an unboxing or an unpackaging. I have no idea who this is from. Because the names on the back, you know, usually if you, want, if you want to send me something to open on one of these live shows, I'll open anything. As long as it's family friendly, it's fine. Um, I don't care what it is. I mean, just send it. I'll show it. I'll talk about it. I'll smell it. I'll I'll taste it. whatever it is. I'll 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 be happy to unbox it. I just think it's fun for me. I think you guys might enjoy it too. But uh, I didn't recognize the names. And if you send me something, always write in the box or the bag. You know, like open on the live or for live stream. Some indication that I received. If I can find it, yeah. Um, I received two packages from two different names. Excuse me while I relight that wick. I'll tell you why I'm doing that in a little bit. Received these two packages. So I opened them up thinking maybe it was something I ordered on eBay. Um, it was addressed to Shane Carlson, not the candle enthusiast uh, sent to my P.O. box. And I took a brief look at these, both of them, and I popped them back in. So I kind of know what they are, and I know what they're in reference to, but I really haven't seen them yet. Oh, there's a note! There's a note! But it's see, the thing is, the person who bought this for me bought them on eBay. So this is not a note for me. This is the person, this is a note for the person who bought this for me. It says, thank you for shopping with me. Enjoy the pins, Kelly. I don't know who that is. And look at this. There's two here. Okay, so these are Disney pins, uh, Expedition Everest, which is... Um, 
uh, in the park in Disney World, Expedition Everest is kind of like the Matterhorn of Disney World. And look, we have the little Yeti. It's hard to dem dem demonstrate this, but it looks like he... Yeah, he, he slides. Oh, I almost knocked the coffee over. He slides up and... These are really nice Disney Park pins. I wish it wasn't so overexposed and in focus. Now, why would send somebody send me um, these pins of the Yeti? Well... This is a new microphone I just bought, and if you are in the Facebook fan group, um, we have kind of a, a weekly thing that Rebecca puts together for us where it's, uh, how well do you know the candle enthusiast? And one of the questions was that I bought a new microphone and multiple choice question, what did I name this microphone? I named this microphone uh, the Matterhorn from uh, the ride from Disneyland because it's a blue Yeti microphone. Blue Yeti, there's a Yeti in the Matterhorn, Herald, and blue, blue ice, Matterhorn. Um, so th this, although, although this is, it could be Herald, but it's not the Matterhorn, it's Expedition Everest. That's what this is in reference to. Who sent it? Anybody here? Uh, Sammy says, Shane, you should be roasting your own coffee beans. My friend's husband recently started doing this. Talk about aromatics. I used to do it all the time. Um, I, I didn't mean to say it like I'm, I was like yelling at you there, Sammy. Uh, uh, I did. In college, um, I would buy uh, green coffee beans from Columbia. Uh, they would actually come in a burlap sack. And you can do this at home, too. Um, I mean, uh, if you don't want to spend big bucks on a, I mean, a, a really expensive coffee roaster, it will cost you thousands, thousands. But you can get, you know, a, a roaster that's made for coffee beans, or you get a hot air popcorn popper that has a fan inside, and you can uh, roast your coffee beans anywhere from light, medium, full city roast, um, light city roast. Espresso roast, Italian roast, French roast. There's a whole art form to it. It's a little bit messy, but you're right. Roasting them in your home is a wonderfully aromatic experience. Maybe I should do that. I used to have a hot popcorn, hot air popcorn popper specifically for roasting coffee beans because you don't want to use it for popcorn after you use it for coffee. And so this came in a separate package from a separate eBay seller. And this is so nice. It's another... So I wasn't sure if these were actually Disney products, but they are. I gotta keep switching this. I gotta figure out how to do this. And... So, again, the Yeti Herald... A uh, very happy looking guy. And he's holding like a raspberry sorbet ice cream cone. So again, three beautiful pins. Wonder if that does say Ooh, Disney slash Pixar. Well, whoever sent these, please let me know. And thank you so much, because I don't think these were inexpensive. These type of pins are not cheap. Herald 2.0. Oh, yeah, Herald 2.0 is the new animatronic Herald at the Matterhorn. Um, and he's terrifying. All right, what else do we got? This bag is filled with one thing and one thing only, baby. Um, it's been sitting in, in my office. This is no longer my office. My office is in the next room. Uh, but it's been sitting there forever. But 
every time I every time I don't know why I said it like that every time I find a haunted hollow melt cup uh, the now retired 2017 fragrance which was a huge hit for me every time I find one of these pop it buy it pop it in this bag oh my god I understand people I understand if you don't like it but man is that so real it's so real it's so real what an experience this candle was one of the greatest halloween efforts yankee candles ever made and uh the, that's the reason why i have stocked up i have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen fifteen in here and i got about ten more milk cups in there uh, I am stocking up, but to raise uh, some extra funding for Aromatic Adventures, I might put up a few on the Candle Enthusiast eBay page this Halloween season, so keep your eyes open for that. And if anyone desperately needs a Haunted Hollow, like you really need one, I don't have any candles to spare, I have a bunch, but... Uh, <laughs> can't I can't spare can't spare any of them um but if you need a milk cup uh let me know send me an email we'll talk will you be returning to sleepy hollow um well sleepy hollow is some place I go all the time um just unfortunately other than the cemetery there's just not a lot other than hiking trails which is a really nice thing to do there's a hiking I mean they're beautiful um but to actually make a, a video, um, um, documenting something, um, I don't have an angle. Uh, so uh, maybe we'll do. Well, we I, I, try, I try to do lives every autumn and 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 and, and Sleepy Hollow. Um, I just gotta find some more nifty things that are hidden to the tourists and um you know i spent uh, my one of my best friends who was the editor on several of the movies i worked on uh we edited the edited actually an entire feature film in sleepy hollow or Terrytown, really and um so i spent a lot of time there there's just not a lot of things that tie in with the legend of Sleepy Hollow other than the, the, the cemetery. There's a little lighthouse uh, by the cemetery, I think, along the Hudson River. Yeah, um, I can't think of a lighthouse. Um, but in the book, um, let's talk about Terrytown. And a lot of, it used to be a big port town, uh, Terrytown. And, um, you know, uh, there's not a whole lot of ancient artifacts left. But I'll work on it. I'll work on it. Julie Sugar Pie Cottage. I feel like I haven't seen... Well, wait a minute. I think you have been here today. Um, nice to see all these familiar names. Uh, I do wax melts, but I've never used melt cups. I've never used a melt cup before. Or I just don't have a centerpiece. I, I'm a wick and flame person just the way it is. I, I'm not judging anyone who thinks or does differently. Um, so what do you think about the Kringle Halloween line of candles coming up? Do you want to see something interesting, guys? Don't share this with Mike Kittrich Jr. Because I don't want him getting mad at me. I like, I like Mickey Jr., 
And I think his dad, well, his dad is an incredible inspiration, but let me show you something. Okay, tell me if any of this looks familiar. First of all, Leslie's talking about uh, these Kringle candles that the CEO, the owner of Kringle Candle, posted on a Facebook group. Um, there's It's Alive, Black Wax, Two Wick Tumblr, under the Kringle label, there's the Haunted House. Um, and uh, is, if Rachel stole the house, Rachel was actually inspired. She really did. Like, I don't know how exactly it went down. Um, what's that one called? But take a look at these pictures. Be, look, look at these pictures. Don't forget them. Okay? Graveyard Night. Now, here's the thing. Because I do a lot of editing, there's there's a couple others. It does look like Witch's Cauldron's coming back, Fright Night's coming back, Wolf's Bane may be coming back. Uh, he didn't picture them, but if you look really closely, you can see the Fright Night label in the corner of the image. Um, so, yeah, we have a whole new lineup of Kringle Halloween candles, which is something that's been gone since 2012. And it's probably... Uh, the biggest news coming from Kringle in the longest time. But I, since I edit a lot, and uh, I, 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 I spend a lot of time looking at stock images, like Getty images and stuff like that, and it, you just become familiar with very popular stock images. So when I saw these labels, I'm looking at them, and I'm like, wow, you know, these are very clean, very sharp, but very vague like graveyard night and it's just a pumpkin and they look cropped and with a little bit of work check this out um you see this it's a stock image i i i look there's a movie. It's alive. It's the same photo. It's a stock image that they used for the candle labels. Now look, I understand. I mean, like, you, you, got, you gotta save money somehow, but we're talking about Kringle Candle here. I mean, it would be an understatement if I said See, here's an iPhone case. It's an iPhone case cover <laughs> that has the same image of one of the candles. And um, and there's the full lineup of... And if you look right here, um, you can see the Fright Night label. Um, you probably can't see it, but if you look at this image um, anywhere online, you'll see the Fright Night image. But anyway... Um, all stock images. I don't understand. And la last year he posted a, f um, a candle concept called Voodoo, Voodoo something or other. And that was the stock image that he used um, to, to promote it, even though he didn't put it out last year. Oh, and one more, one more. There's a stock image of the haunted house. That is not even, I'm not even kidding. That is just a photoshopped, enhanced photograph of the actual Bates home at Universal Studios. That's not like a digital recreation. That is a photograph of the Bates house, just digitally enhanced. Anyway, um, so my point is, you know, I'm always looking for people who can do artwork for this channel. In fact, because I'm starting the third channel soon, I'm looking for art artists who would be willing to contribute artwork um, for the website, for future projects, and, you know, free of charge. I found a bunch of people who are interested in collaborating and, and sharing their artistic efforts. And we're dealing with Kringle Candle, which is a very big name in the candle industry. And 
they're buying stock photos. If you don't know how this works, you license a stock photo. You don't own the photo. You, you license it out for a certain amount of years. But anybody can license them unless you spend an enormous amount of money and, and have an ex you buy an exclusive license to that photograph. But you never really own the photo. So many artists would be willing to jump on that opportunity. I would have jumped on that opportunity to create the artwork for Kringle Candles for Halloween. But they, they chose stock images. I don't know. I, I really don't know how to feel about that. If you have the resources, reach out. Reach out. So Leslie's pr is uh, a producer of candles, Silver, Silver Moon Candle Company, and she says, um, "I'm so right with you with big candle companies. I use um, images from photographers that allow me to use their work." So Leslie's reaching out to photographers. <laughs> to use their artwork for her candles. Leslie's doing. One woman show, and yet Kringle Candle, I don't know. I, I don't want to beat up on that, but I just, to me, that's just, there's something that's, it, it kind of, it made me, uh, it didn't, it, it's something that people want so much, are these Halloween candles, and it's kind of like, is this how you're going to illustrate how much, um, like how much you don't care um, about the labels? Are you just going to, you know, buy stock photos for a couple hundred bucks, slap them on a candle? I love Kringle, Mike, Mike Kittredge Jr. or the third, however you want to, uh, whatever name you go by. Uh, nothing bad. Not that he would be watching this, but um, I don't think you would want my artwork, says Eric. I can only imagine, Eric. Washington Wicks. I think your company has a million, millions of dollars you can afford to get your own artist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, I don't want to beat this to death, but Washington Wicks, again, another classic example of... Uh, uh, you know, um, fantastic artwork, and um, you know, every can. I mean, we all. Ha I mean, if you're like me, you take candle labels very seriously. Okay, so let's stop being negative here. And maybe it's a big hoax. Maybe he's posting those candles, but really, there's a whole other lineup of candles coming out. Maybe they're they're just decoys. You never know. Uh, Morgan says, uh, Kringle didn't release the Halloween candles from last year, even though there was kind of a hint that they were doing so. So are they going to do it this year? I don't know. I don't know. It's a good question. It sounded... I mean, I think to do that two years in a row would be quite cruel. Um, let's do a few more things. Let's do this Yankee Candle Archives thing real quick. I have to do it because it's in the the description but we'll do this real quick because i want to start producing more yankee candle archive videos for the candle enthusiasts when i get back into the full swing just again real quick what is uh, uh yankee candle archives something that i started a long time ago and um uh i really thought it was interesting i, I i've always liked collecting uh yankee candles that uh were vintage um not to be burned uh, for display purposes. You know, if it's a special candle, it's got a special place in my heart. That toffee almond is, a, or uh, almond toffee is a good example. Um, it's one that you know um, always intrigued me. I kind of remember it, and it was an opportunity to buy it, so I got it. Uh, so, what we have here is a 35-year-old Yankee candle. Back then, this is what the house warmers looked like, guys. They were they weren't uh, they didn't have the pictures. They were called country kitchen candles, and um, 
and all the jars were the same. So the fragrance was only printed right there. They put a little sticker, French vanilla. This is uh, an unlit mid 1980s, look at that bottom label, mid 1980s French vanilla Yankee Candle, which is one of their earliest fragrances. This is a 2018 French vanilla Yankee Candle. Same fragrance, 30 years apart. Look at the colors. Can we get the color? start with the old guy Let's see how we'll do a little compare and contrast we'll keep it short so I can smell the age you can smell um, you know you can tell when you smell this you can tell you know there there's maybe a little bit of decomposition of the wax or a breakdown of some of the fragrance oil but underneath that age right it's like a wine that you're aging in your cellar and it's so it's getting so good you're aging you're aging and aging and you age it just a little bit too long and then it starts it's inevitable decline um it's kind of like that it's when, when a wine starts to decline it doesn't mean you can't drink it but you miss that prime opportunity when it was at its best and to me, that's kind of what this is. It's like, you know, it has a little bit of that age to it, but putting that aside, you know, a little bit of that musty, um, you know, you grab something old and made of plastic from a hot attic, you put that aside. There's a definitive French vanilla aroma in here, and it's uh, re really authentic and very recognizable as the French vanilla Yankee candle that I know, the fragrance that I know, which is something I've already said today, um, really isn't like French vanilla bean to me as much as it is soft serve vanilla ice cream. I've already said that today, but I'm gonna say it again. Um, really held up, beautifully considering the age. Again, this is a collector's piece. This is not something for me to burn, um, but, Let's fast forward to 2018, same fragrance. Will this candle last 30 years on the shelf? Many different ingredients. Intensity, the same. On cold, the same. This is not age, this is not old. This just, it's the same, but there's, it's like that it's like that vanilla soft serve, but with ready whip. <laughs> the whipped cream out of the can on top. Uh, it has that, 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 that sugary, dairy rich. It really smells like whipped cream. <laughs> like a lot. And um, where the French vanilla down here smelled like that soft serve ice cream. This smells like the soft serve ice cream, but here's the key. The French vanilla waffle cone, right? If you ever walk by a place where they're making these French vanilla waffle cones fresh, uh, it is truly one of the most beautiful aromatic experiences as far as sweet treats in my opinion and i get a little bit more of that so um i find i find again from my experience this was reported last year that uh from my experience of burning this candle throughout my my years it's changed a little bit the their aromatic profile this is not an outlet candle this was purchased last year during a semi-annual sale and it was freshly poured. Um, it's changed a little bit. Um, does it still remind me of the big label French vanilla Yankee candle? Yeah, it does. It does. And it smells really nice. 
Um, so there's just a quick little Yankee Candle archive. And I'll give you a sneak peek of another example. This is a different kind of one. I have a bunch of rose candles. You know, uh, salt mist, rose. What is it? Rose. I can never get the names right. Rose of Cliff Walk. Oh, God, there's so many of them. Um, one that no one talks about is this one right here. Let's get some lights. Um, a vintage rose. This was a really pretty, fruity, floral uh, Yankee Candle. This one was previously lit, but not by me. Yeah, this is really, I mean, especially for being an old candle, really pretty, citrusy, floral, not, not an overly musky rose. Again, rose and musk kind of go hand in hand. But then we know fresh cut roses. This is a pour from last year. Uh, green. So what this did not have, the vintage rose, was the stems. I mean, this is like we just chopped the rose petals, maybe dehydrated the rose petals in a dehydrator or on a low heat in the oven, right? And then he took the stems, the clipped stems, and he threw them in a blender and pureed them, or a food processor and pureed them. There is an explosive green um, um, uh, rose stem or, or flower stem, I find, in fresh-cut roses, which makes sense, fresh-cut roses, right? And then uh, the petals are very musky, uh, very rose and uh, geranium forward. And um, because it's a heavy floral, it's not for everybody. But check this one out. I'm going to get used to this camera angle. Gold, golden rose. This was, I don't know if these ever were released in the United States. This is not a U.S. candle. This is uh, from the U.K. This is a, an, a, an opaque, uh, flat black or matte black Yankee candle jar. Very pretty. And they have they had these decals on there, these metallic decals. Very nice design. Paper labels. And I have an orange blossom on the shelf. I think there were a couple more in this collection. It was a limited edition, golden rose, rose-scented candle. Uh, and it's not that old. I believe maybe two to three years, well, more than two, about three years. White wax. That's, that's sensual. <laughs> I'm trying to find different adjective. But it is. That smells, that smells like that's not just rose like that is a that is a rose inspired fragrance like there's a whole lot going on here there is a warmth like that amber we talked about on the previous live there's a creamy soapy perfumey you know i'm thinking of like you know uh i don't know Try to think of an image. The image I have, I don't want to share. It's, it's a little too too extreme. Um, um, let's just put it this way. I, you know, when I smell this, I'm expecting to see, you know, pillar candles like, you know, big wax pillar candles and an open window at night with lace curtains and and just a very elegant. Uh, uh, majestic old furniture hotel room or, or, or bedroom. It has this like um, I'm just gonna go ahead and say it. It's it, you know, honestly it smells like you know let's I'm just gonna say for example like your great aunt's 
your wealthy great aunt's living room, or just say bedroom because I said sensual. Like, there's just something very romantic but mature about this fragrance. It's a very pretty fragrance. And I'm humoring myself. I hope someone's laughing. A lot of good stuff going on there. So there's an example, two examples of the Yankee Candle archives. Um, I have a whole bunch more rose candles. I actually even have an older fresh cut roses that we could compare and contrast. Gabe is back. Where has Gabe been? Roses of Cliffwalk. Thank you so much. Did I get it right? I may have butchered it. You know, there are varieties of roses called musk roses. Um, I didn't know that. Um, I definitely would love to spend a whole bunch of time researching, training my nose for florals. One thing I did not have to tread my nose, train my nose for when it came to wine, florals was not a, it's not a huge descriptor. Like if you know your orange blossom compared to your gardenia, compared to your lilac, that's about it. You know, you don't need to train your nose on different varieties. And then species within every variety of, um, of florals. I would love to train my nose. And if you go to a florist, you think, oh, just go to a florist and ask to sniff around. No, they, they breed a lot of uh, the, 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 the flowers and floors to not smell. They smell like sneezy, but they don't have a strong, pungent smell, some, some of them. Um, so really... Going to a botanical garden is really the best way to train your nose, but I mean, I just, my head would explode after spending a day smelling florals. But musk rose, I mean, I think any rose is going to smell musky. I wonder if the musk rose is even muskier, you know, like that would be interesting. But again, it goes back to my question from earlier today. What is musk? What is musk? When I talk about rose, musk is implied because for me, roses are musky. But if you really want to think about something, and hey, send me an email if you got a good answer. What is the true definition of musk? If I said fruit musk versus floral musk versus white musk versus real musk from animals versus you know, a, the different kind of musk that we find in rose or leather, right? What defines musk? What is musk? When is something musky? It's a really hard question. And no two roses smell alike to me. And um, I think that's such a great point. That's such a great point, and I think that really emphasizes my, my, my interest of really studying and training my nose for florals. Because you're absolutely right. Like, different flowers smell different, but then again, different flowers, but a, a different species within or different variety within are going to smell different. When is the best time to visit Yankee Candle Village this autumn? Not too crowded, but still nice. Okay, so this is the thing with the Yankee Candle Village. Um, you would think, you would think because Yankee Candle, Halloween candles, and the big Halloween party that they have at Yankee Candle Village, that October would be a super busy month. For Yankee Candle, it's not. It's really strange. It's not because by the time the customers, by the time Yankee Candle lovers get to October, admit it. By the time October comes, you're kind of already thinking about Christmas, right? Like Halloween's been around 
I mean, the Halloween party used to be the first Saturday in August, so all August, all September. So now you're going to the third month of Halloween. And really what happens that I find is October is the great, is a really great time to go um, in autumn. And it just works out because that's when the foliage is going to be beautiful. It's going to be absolutely perfect. But here's the absolute key. Monday morning. If you can, if you're going to spend the night, get a hotel room uh, Sunday night. You'll get a non-weekend uh, rate. Spend Sunday night in, a, in a, a hotel or a motel. And then Monday morning, 10 o'clock when they open the doors, I promise you, you'll be the only person in the entire Yankee Cano Village, except for the employees. You'll be the only person. And if not the only person, maybe one or two other people. There's been times where I have been the only customer in the whole entire Yankee Candle Village for all, uh, over an hour. Um, you just, you have to find the slow times and you have to go when the doors open and Monday, who's going to Yankee Candle on Monday morning other than me? So that's my suggestion. A handful of us went in mid-October, and that seemed like a good time to hit the Yankee Candle Village and Kringle. So there you go. There's Eric kind of confirming that. Uh, Julie says, I would love to visit the Yankee Candle Village one day. That's what, you know, I, um, that's ultimately what got the management... Uh, at Yankee Candle Village, uh, excited for me to not just evaluate candles in Yankee Candle Village, but to actually film Yankee Candle Village. They saw that I wanted to not just vlog the space of the Yankee Candle Village, but try to edit together an experience. At least that was the goal, to edit, to edit together an experience if, for people who could never visit the Yankee Candle Village to really give you a room by room tour and to make you feel like you're there. Um, you know, that video, I have to admit, the, the one that's almost an hour long, I, I was just, uh, it was filmed over like three different trips, probably o like six days of film. That's why my clothes are always changing and the time of the year is always changing. But I mean, I just, I just filmed so much footage and I remember I was going to Disneyland and I rushed to get that video completed so I could post it and go to California and go to Disneyland for several days. Um, but, um, and uh, so, uh, um, yeah, so maybe one day, although things, a lot of things have changed at the Yankee Kindle Village, maybe I will do another video. Mr. Carlson, yes. What is your email? Uh, the name is Shane, not Sean. Um, and you can find my email in the descri or the yeah the description below. What else do we got here? What am I opening? Did we do everything? I feel like there's more. Oh, you know what I have? Let's do this. Something that I've been... A, a tool that I wanted to add to my candle accessories I've been putting it off because they were quite expensive but I found one for a good price if I can find it where on earth did I put it here it is yeah let's hope this opens up easily you know what this is this is a non-contact uh, is there a special name 
infrared thermometer. Okay, so hopefully the battery is installed. Uh, well, actually it is because I've used it before. Yeah. Um, so this is great. This is a tool. Uh, it's not so much that I need it, uh, but for video purposes, this can kind of help me uh, demonstrate a few things in upcoming videos. Um, right now, uh, I have a fan right here, uh, keeping me cool. I had the AC going, but I also have candles right here going. Uh, this one, very burning very poorly, as you can see. Uh, look at that. We've had several issues with this candle <laughs> over several live videos. Uh, here's the problem, guys. It's a little bit warm here, and the wax is melted, but it's not warm there. Um, so can I demonstrate this? Oh man, this is taking a lot of... No, I knew it was gonna happen. Uh, but for future videos, what I wanna be able to do is I can point this at different areas of the jar and take uh, the temperature of the glass. Uh, kind of demonstrating and showing that drafts, whether it be a window, whether it be a fan, whether it be central air, whether it be AC, whether it be circulation or ventilation in the room, just natural living space, uh, current uh, uh, circulation will alter the temperature of the glass in different areas of the candle. And when folks are having a really difficult time with candles pooling, it's funny that people really don't talk about that anymore, I don't think. Um, uh, th this is just a great way, again, on camera to show the difference, the drastic difference of the temperature of the glass. So, do I really need this for myself? No. Uh, but for the camera, I could see this being a tool. Plus, it looks really cool and high-tech and looks like, you know, like Harrison Ford's gun and Blade Runner that was cut in half. And I got it for cheap. All right, let's open it up. Any questions? Any questions, guys? Let's let's have at it. What what's what 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 are the questions that you guys have for me? You guys said you had any questions. Um, did I show my feet? I crossed my foot. Did I just show my foot on the screen? Does it shock you that I'm not wearing socks? and shoes. I'm trying to think if my feet have ever been on camera before. I think a few times. Um, Shane, show us your collection. Well, This is not my collection. This is my Yankee Candle shelf. Oh God, I gotta move all of this stuff that's on the tables here. And I apologize. The reason why I don't like doing this is because this space is perpetually uh, needs to be organized. So let's see if we can do this. We have a light here. I mean, this is not going to be the best demonstration in the world. Um, okay, so if we go up on top here, uh, you can see how the wall changes. <laughs> so you get the one wall here and the, the other wall here, my old office wall. Uh, all my Christmas candles up here not all of them but you can see these are the, the, these are you know the classics i have my balsam and cedar mistletoe uh balsam fir uh christmas eve all black bands christmas cookie chris or uh, uh, gingerbread a lot of my re favorite retired or changed labels all christmas here this is the worst video quality i apologize here is all autumn there's a few here um 
three rows that are miscellaneous snow cherries on ice angels wings but mainly all autumn fragrances here we go down here these are uh, all of my Halloween Yankee candles. This is all Yankee candles, this shelf. Uh, this is why I had to, had to replace these wooden shelves with uh, MDF, uh, three quarter inch uh, wood. Because if I did not, these shelves, the wood that came with these shelves would snap and collapse in a matter of days because of the weight of the candles. Now down here, it gets, it gets, starts to get a little sketchy. The themes uh, start to get a little bit lost, but we have uh, miscellaneous fruits, uh, seasonal things, smaller formats, and then down below, it really needs organ, organization. Spring cleaning is coming. Uh, a lot of my accessories. So out of all my Yankee candles, the one that I, you know, the ones that I burn and the ones that will remain unburned, I keep on this shelf. And they total about, let's just say to be safe, 350, give or take, because I'm constantly, you know, I'll give some away or I'll sell some, but I'll also buy some and uh, maybe trade some. Uh, but uh, the other areas of this room that I just can't show you right now because I just I just don't like the condition of the studio uh, all all right there more right there but it's getting pretty low it's really not much the show um, I've really kind of decreased um, the, a lot of the overstock candles that I had that I knew I wasn't going to burn. I still have a case of Witch's Cauldron, the original, uh, Wolf's Bane, and Fright Night. And I only have one candy corn. These are the Kringle candles, the original scents. And I have them in all formats. The 8 ounce, whatever the other one is, 3 ounce, and then... Uh, the daylights. Ooh, this camera angle, a little bit wider, I like it. Uh, looking forward to Witch City Wicks collaboration, hopefully Washington Wicks and Silver Moon too. Yeah, you know, uh, collaborations, collaborations. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's just me. You know, um, I was telling a bunch of... Um, some some you guys and some you know friends in my physical life but i you know whenever i tell people about this little break that i'm taking this massive break that i'm taking it's um before just jumping back into it i really want to get all my ducks in a row but what was really bothering me is i kept giving promises i'll be back next month i'll be back in a couple weeks i'll be back on this such and such date i don't know when i'll be back um full time i want to make sure that i you know i keep going live and talking with you guys but I'm not quite sure but when things start getting um, you know and I'm hopefully posting one or two videos a week um, that's when I really want to push the collaborations because as much as I love to talk about Yankee Candle I really really I say this all the time for those of you guys tune in all the time I really want to I think the you guys know Yankee Candle with or without me, but what you may not know is the smaller candle companies. And I really want to make sure that I search, I hunt down, and I find these beautiful little uh, small batch handcrafted candle companies and share them uh, with you. And uh, because I truly think it's, it's a completely different way to enjoy candles. Uh, I'll always buy Yankee Candle I, you know, Bath and Body Works. I, you know, I've never said anything bad about them. I, you know, great. There's great candles that are in mass production, sold all over the world. But there's also very special, rare candles that. One of the many things that make them special is the scarcity of them, and um, 
I, that's really what I, I want to spend a lot of time working on talking about the artist just as much as the actual candles. And I'm reading all your comments. I'm loving the positivity here. Where does the name candle enthusiast originate? Where did the candle enthusiast come from? Well, I feel like I squeeze this in every video. Wine industry, right? So um, uh, if you're a fan of wine, you most likely have heard of the magazine Wine Enthusiast, the wine enthusiast. The wine enthusiast is who uh, Robert Parker, uh, the wine reviewer, writes for. You know, 98 points, 92 points, you know, these ratings, these completely superfluous ratings that they give wines. Wine Enthusiast Magazine. So uh, when I was in California and I was working at a winery, it was kind of a nickname that was given to me because it was no secret that I was a big fan of candles and that um, my coworkers would half jokingly, half kind of sticking a knife and call me the candle enthusiast. But the thing is, I embraced it. I loved it. I'm like the candle enthusiast, yeah. Um, and it's kind of that name was something I put in my pocket. But it wasn't so much the name, it was the idea of, well, why not? Why can't there be an advocate of candles who take, you know, candles just as seriously as these people who are taking wine seriously. In many ways, I felt like my coworkers were being hypocrites. You know, it's like, it's like how, it's like, here's the thing. You know, I worked in a, a winery, right? And you'd have people who'd be like, I don't drink wine uh, unless it comes from this such and such place and costs this much and, you know, gets this rating, whatever. So they're talking about wine and how their standards are so high, but it's the same people who make the crappiest coffee in the morning for the staff, right? This guy who's got multi-millions of dollars that I worked with, not for, with, and he's got like the greatest wine collection in the world. I love the guy, but he, you know, he wouldn't, he wouldn't, he, he, he would look at it, any, any certain kind of wines as swill, you know? Um, if it, it was, didn't meet his standards. Yet he drank the worst coffee and made the worst coffee every single morning. And I just felt like, like it, you, if, you like, if you're passionate about beverage, like the, I just felt like there was hip, hypocritical a little bit. So in many ways, it's like if you're going to spend your, your whole day with a, your nose in a glass of wine doing sensory evaluation, what's so silly about appreciating candles and evaluating the candles in the same manner and that's the, i don't know and then a buddy of mine um started talking about well, what if we had our own candle company we just kind of threw ideas back and forth and so weirdly so weird like th this guy before he knew me good friend uh really good friend uh, before he knew me, he never probably thought of a scented candle in his entire life. But we became friends. I kind of showed him my interest in, in candles, and he quickly, quickly just fell in love with it. And to the point where we're talking about starting a company. And then I move away from California. And then a year after I'm out of California, he starts, uh, he starts dating, and still to this day is dating a candle maker. <laughs> from California. So it's just so weird. It's just very weird because he's like actually helping her make the candles. She has her own small candle company. That's Jessie's fine and refined. They don't, she, she, I don't believe she has an Etsy store. She only sells locally in markets in Napa, but um, the candles are quite nice. So Kazra, to answer your question, Candle Enthusiast, Wine Enthusiast Magazine. It was kind of a, meant for something to be like a put down you guys hear elsa barking she's been so bad very bad and she's dirty 
She, I, I was going to put her on camera today if she wasn't so dirty, but she's, it's summer. She's playing in the wet grass and the mud. Um... Sorry if I'm skipping anyone's questions. Um, glistening. I got one more glistening snow, but I'm saving it. It's my only one. Snow is glistening. Uh, can I show you? Uh, you guys know the story. I have a snow is glistening wax inside of a season of peace jar. It was a flaw. I don't know how you do that. But not only that, it somehow smells like chocolate too. It's like getting a misprinted dollar bill. I thought I just thought it was so cool when I found it that I had to buy it. It's somewhere. Last chance, guys. Any questions? Or if you asked a question... Okay, you asked a question. M Shane, you missed my amazing question. Where is it? Uh, I see that Eric is promoting the Facebook fan group. Please, uh, if you're interested in kind of becoming a part of the community, um, not... Um, I don't want to make it sound like the candle community because there's so many wonderful candle groups out there in Facebook group. But what um, uh, what was been created on Facebook for, for for me, I had nothing to do with it. But is it's just this little pocket of positivity where it's just it's kind of an unwritten rule that everyone follows of just being kind to one another, and there's no drama and bickering and fighting. And it's not just about candles. It's just a place where people can come in and post anything they want. It's a very peaceful, fun place. I'm, I'm just so proud that my face is on it. You know, I, like I said, I had nothing to do with its creation. But uh, please swing on over. And um, uh, if you have any interest in joining that group, uh, just type in the Candle Enthusiast uh, fan group on Facebook. If you've got a Facebook account, you're good to go. What is your question? Okay, question. Uh, if you could have the person, uh, if you could have the person, career, or any other thing that you would most want in the world, would you give it all? I'm sorry, I, my eyes are so tired. Would you give up all of your candles and agree to never burn another candle in exchange? Oh my God! So let me read that again, real quick. I mean, and to, to summarize, if you could have the person career, career, or any other thing, I mean, I'm absolutely yes. I'm sorry if that disappoints anybody. Um, um, I mean, never burning a candle again for the rest of my life, that that's kind of serious. Like, that 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 would break my heart. Obviously, I mean, it'd be huge damage. But um, I think, I don't know. I, I think, you know, uh, when people see, like, my Yankee Candle collection or I show a picture or if, when I just showed you guys, you're like, oh, my God, he must be obsessive, compulsive. Um, he's hoarding all these candles. You know, I. Why not? <laughs> why not? You know, I have them. I like them. If I don't burn them, I have the space. They've. I keep them here. They're safe. It's temperature and humidity controlled in here. If I had to get rid of my candles, um, it would be a very, very sad day. But yes, if I could, you know, trade my life to be behind the camera and. And, and and tell stories and edit and make movies and to uh, to go around and just document things that make me feel warm and cozy and share it with an audience yeah I mean that's to me that's 
much more valuable than uh, a, you know, a very passionate hobby of mine, which is candle burning. I don't, I wish you could just scratch out and never burn a candle again, because that would be hard. But if I had to give up my collection to, yeah, to, to just be where I want to be on YouTube, have the money and to be able to go out and completely selflessly go out and make videos for the sole purpose of just sharing my experiences with people who can't do that you know I know what it's like to have that nine to five working overtime you can't leave town you're single you're living on your own so your weekends are all about cleaning and doing laundry and grocery shopping I know what it's like to feel trapped and not to be able to get in your car and go places and travel so I think my my, my true goal and passion is to be able to get in that car, go wherever I want, something I always did from the day I got my license, drive without a destination, have a camera in my hand, and vicariously share my experience, edit together to make it something that is, is pleasing to the eye, it's not overly long and mundane, it's not a boring blog, it's not like this one take um, and to be able to share it with people you know I, I've shared my personal stories about how people have reached out to me and and said that this video meant a lot to me for one reason or all of your videos your travel videos mean a lot to me because I can't ever go to New England I'll never be able to go to New England I'll never be able to go to the United States or uh, I'm disabled so I won't be able to do this I won't be able to do that to be able to give someone an experience um, through uh, visual a visual art form that 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 is really my 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 true passion and my calling I think um, so it's I don't know I'm I'm I'm, I'm spewing I, th I think everything I'm saying is true but I'm um, I'm just rambling. And, and Leslie goes, well, it sounds like my, my life in a nutshell. I know what it's like, Nesley. I know, Nesley. I called you Nesley. Uh, Leslie, I know what it's like. Um, I mean, I, I lived in Napa Valley. And although it's a beautiful place to be, for six years, I, in, in six years, I couldn't make it from Napa Valley to, to Lake Tahoe. It's like a two and a half hour drive, if that. I, could, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I could not find enough time in my weekend to pull that off because I was so trapped. Haunted attraction trip. You, you got it. And Amy Love, I love this. Amy Love, I love this. Um, you just described what your videos do for me. Exclamation point. Two of them. Two exclamation points. I enjoy the videos of your travels. They give uh, me an escape. Um, not to sound like a cornball or to be overly sappy, but a, a short little comment like that, I mean, you know how much that, that moves me? Like, uh, I mean, it, it just means so much. And the fact that I don't have the means and the resources to do it every day Oh, man, it's frustrating. It's really frustrating. So, yes, would I trade my candle collection to stay on the road all year long? You better believe it. I would just hop from hotel to hotel or motel to motel. Film every day. I love your outdoor videos, says Laura. Thank you so much. Um, so thank you for asking that, that, that question, Eric. I, I appreciate that. Um, all right, guys, it is nearly 6 p.m. It is Sunday, and I need to enjoy the last remaining pieces of the weekend before Mondays. Monday, you gotta love Mon Monday, Monday, Mamas and the Papas. You gotta love Mondays. Um, and, um, but this has been 
with two lives today, many hours. This might be the longest live stretch ever. Two different channels. But either way, I uh, really appreciate you guys, as always, deeply. Energy a little low today. I'm okay. Are, are you worried about me? Don't be worried about me. There's nothing wrong with me. I think I just got up extra. To, it, was a, it was like a 5 o'clock in the morning kind of morning for me this morning. And, um, you know, a lot of coffee. Too, too much too soon. So it's like nighttime for me right now. Um, but don't, yeah. So the energy, feeling a little low. But I'm glad that I got through all of those. If you missed it, make sure you go to the main channel and check out the live of all eight fragrances they're not all i keep saying all um there's probably one or two missing but eight of the eventual however many fragrances for 2019 autumn yankee candle farmer's market collection um very interesting and because it was on the fly and unedited probably the most honest and the most opinionated you'll ever hear me be um because uh, I usually sometimes try to cut out <laughs> anything if it looks like I'm being too honest or uh, honest but cruel. What is uh, the ideal storage temperature for candles? Same thing with wine. We want 70% humidity if you can get that. Um, and cold or cool. Um, just be careful of fans, um, air conditioners. If you have constant circulation in your room and you have candles that don't have lids, that's going to really um, eventually start to sap out the oil from the candle. At least, I mean, come on. I mean, scientifically, that makes sense to me. Um, and it's just, it's you know the the fragrance oils are are, are 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 volatile right they're 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 meant to become airborne and if you have circulation it's you're going to lose the fragrance so um just make be very careful of um uh any kind of excess fans or drafts in um your living space but i would say dark no sunlight not even artificial light if you can help it uh nice dark 70% uh, percent humidity, um, you can do much less than that, but you don't want it dry. Don't get a big dehumidifier and get it to like 0% humidity. Your candles will dry out even with the lids on them. Um, and um, yeah, that's actually a really good question. Thank you for asking that. Uda Slim, Uda Slim. Um, where has Uda been? Uh, what candles are you burning right now? Uh, right now, I have the, the the lavender, lavender honey lavender gelato, which was 2018 spring. No, 2017. It's 2017 spring slash summer. Um, I don't know. I, I don't think it got that that collection, the Cafe Al Fresco. I don't think it got enough. The Tahitian Nights. That was more of a summer, but um, there's a there's a few in there that I you know wasn't a big fan of. Um, the Mediterranean Breeze. It's not because I think they're bad candles. I just can't burn them with the the the, the fragrance. Now it's a Mediterranean Breeze and the. Uh, French countryside, something or other, and then the wa the waterfall one. Island waterfall, um, big the island waterfall, a big freesia and lily, like stargazer lily, too potent for me. But that was a good summer or spring collection. But I I burn this during the lives. I actually don't burn a lot of candles in the studio here. Um, I don't kind of. It's sad. I don't come in here and just hang out anymore. This used to be my office. But, um... Okay, Hannah says, This was a lot of fun, Shane. If you need an artist for your channel, reach out to me. Better yet, 
reach out to me. If you, anyone has interest, whether you're a singer, a performer, illustrator of any kind, any kind of art form, or something else, that uh, uh, maybe it's not art form, but something you think that you can contribute to the channel. If you can build very simple websites, hey, there's, there's something. If there's something other than let's say money or a gift that you want to contribute to or invest into the channel or give to the channel uh, there's plenty of roles for everybody and what's great if you're an artist there's always that cross promotion um, so uh, I'm always happy to collaborate so everyone should have my email candle enthusiast at yahoo.com um, and when that website's ready it'll just be Shane at the candle enthusiast uh, dot com. Uh, the candle enthusiast dot com has uh, been in uh, <laughs> uh, b um, been in construction for two years, um, but we're, we're getting on it. And by we, I mean me. Um, uh, yeah, big thumbs up. I'm gonna do it too. Watch this. We're gonna hit thirty. Uh, hit that thumbs up button if you don't mind. And uh, lo lots lots of stuff coming up. I just don't know when I'm repeating myself, but uh, I do. I will make that video for the Yankee Candle fall. I, I should do an edited video. There's a lot to talk about, and um, and uh, one of these days we're just gonna take the cameras, get in the car, and go. We're just gonna go and um, and uh, just go back back to uh, some of my favorite things I was doing and the you know three years ago when I started the candle enthusiast so I hope you guys have tons of patience with me spend some time catch up on my old videos you had six months to do it and you'll have some more time to do it but um, um, I promise you I really am not going anywhere um, oh, look at this I have to say this this was a great Sunday spent. Spent it with Monica, Eric, and you all day. Wait a minute. Was Eric and Monica live today? Um, and, uh, and Eric said, I, I looked healthier today. Well, thank you. Thank you. Good sleep. Um, lots of water. Exercise always helps. And several meals a day, instead of that one big meal at night. Um, I, that's what I've been doing, and I feel a whole lot better, let me tell you. And uh, I limit myself to 24 ounces of coffee a day, which is doable. I can do that. 24 ounces. That's a venti plus 4 ounces. Monica's birthday. Oh my God! Oh, you scared me, Leslie. Okay, it's not today. <laughs> oh, uh, Monica and Elsa, puppy dog Elsa, both of their birthdays fall on June 25th. But you scared me, Leslie, because I thought you meant it was today. Um, and they were live. What were they doing live? This is my day. I don't go live on Saturdays. I'm just kidding. A gallon a day. Um, okay, Gabe's saying you look much different than the last time I saw you. That's probably not a good thing, because the last time you saw me, I probably looked even healthier than what Eric was saying I looked like. <laughs> um, all right, guys, it's time to end this. Can you tell the energy is running low? How do I fix this? Coffee, food... And I want to soak up a little bit of that sun before the day is over. Really, guys, again, I say it and I close with it every live. I say thank you. And, you know, I, I use these phrases like, uh, means the world to me. And, 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 and uh, you know, th thank you for the support and being the pillars of, you know, you know, my momentum, all these things. I don't know how to express my gratitude. 
uh, for the kindness and the positivity. I don't know how to. I'm running out of ways to say it. I don't know how to sh truly show it. So just instead of me showing it, know it. Know how much the kindness, the positive attitude, uh, uh, how much it means to me. Because, man, you know, if it was not... If I didn't have that support, um, you know, it, 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 it would be it'd be tough. It'd be tough being on like an, like a break like this, being away from the channel. Um, uh, but just knowing that you know you guys are still there and uh, you're still awesome, uh, truly, truly does mean the world to me. So I appreciate it. Everyone have a fantastic Sunday night. If for some chance you have tomorrow off, go out and do something fun if the weather's good. And I will be seeing you folks soon. Thank you for joining. I think this new webcam thing is working out pretty well. And leave any questions that I missed in the comments below when this video uploads. This way I can check out the video later and answer those questions. All right, guys. Have a good one. Thanks so much for joining. Have something good for dinner.